All right, then let's start. I will sit down for the majority of the talk so I can play the piano for some examples. All right, my talk is um, titled Composition After the First Minute of Creativity is Spent. Style agnostic tricks and techniques of all eras. eras. So the problem, composing is hard work. Um, if you just play and um, try to figure out something by ear, you will succeed most of the time. Everybody knows uh, a lot of music and you are able to continue. Um, you are playing like this. It's easy to imagine going back. So we, everybody has an, an intuitive understanding of, of music, at least here. Um, but you only get so far. Um, normally, like if you have um, composed a, a verse and a chorus, um, maybe a, a riff and an intro for a pop song, that's it. And then you look at the clock, and after one week of hard work, you look at the clock and say, how much music did I make? One minute. Okay, now what? Uh, I have no, mo no more ideas. Uh, the solution is everybody had this problem for the last uh, millennia or so. And we can tap into this knowledge and at least um, derive some very common principles that, are, uh, that work every time. So I'm talking about uh, musical form and placing notes mostly. Um, and not even dynamics, not even volume. So. Uh, what I mean is no sound engineering or mixing here. Um, this talk is about both generating new material and creating variations of what you already have. And this is uh, aimed at beginners, even though the last two or three examples may be a bit more uh, advanced. So you have to learn this stuff, but once you, ha once you know it, you can apply it uh, nearly every time. Uh, some examples are even trivial, that's the whole point. They are so so obvious, um, just to give you an idea what this is all about and what um, what the idea behind this. Okay, uh, one disclaimer, any me mechanical technique will be discovered by the listener eventually. So if you, if I do this, it's not hard to imagine that this will go on upwards. Um, you decide if this is needed, if you are doing um, like art music, uh, classic music or uh, jazz or whatever, um, heavy metal, then it's, um, you need to prevent this and discover, um, decide, okay, maybe I'll do two times a pattern and then I do a th uh, different thing. In some musical genres you want this uh, to be the case, like um, mineral music of the 60s, 70s, Steve Reich and so on. Uh, you want this pattern to be discovered. You can decide for yourself how you place EDM on the spectrum if you want this uh, to be the case or not. Okay, let's go. This is maybe a bit fast, but you can always watch the video in the end. Um, just an ex example, what do I mean with this? Um, problem is the sound is too thin. Um, what do we do? Just play the same thing, but octaves below or above. So if I do this, this sounds better. You can decide if you do this directly or just, as I did, do it once normally and then repeat as an octave. Only one thing to uh, pay attention to, don't cross into the, uh, below the um, lowest voice already. This may be a problem, but otherwise it works. Um, this is built in in women and men, men singing together, so if you tell uh, a choir sing the same note and they are not very well trained, they will sing actually two different notes in octaves. Straft, straft string guitars, this is built in, uh, other instruments as well. Um, if you do orchestral music, this is the main principle how to decide what individual uh, voices or instruments play. They play the same thing, but an octave, whatever. Uh, extreme case of this is uh, so-called unisono. Um, all, voices, all voices play the same. This will sound impressive for quite a while, and then um, yeah, the wow effect wears off, 
and then you need to stop. One example, some slides, there's abstract example. This is a reminder for me to play this on the piano first. So sometimes I will just skip this, um, sometimes I will play then. Um, one example. Bass and guitar and octaves already. So this is very common knowledge, uh, but just to, even if you um, see the last example and think, no, this is too hard for me, once you learn, this is as easy as setting octaves. This is the whole point of the talk. Okay, this is maybe all already an, an insult to some uh, of you. Um, problem is, the song is only 2.30 long, but you want it to be three minutes. Solution, just take a part you already have, like the last verse, uh, chorus, and transpose it up a whole tone or a semitone or whatever you like. Just uh, same thing. Uh, this is so simple in sim MIDI sequences that you need to pay attention if you do control A and <laughs> pinch it up that you don't destroy your drum tracks, of course. Yeah, I don't have, pro I don't have that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Post everything, yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, so there are for some, uh, some problems. Okay. Um, I skip the piano playing and just play my example. Um, the times is um, from, from where I play. Next one, um, re-instrumentation to use a part again. So, um, you only composed six actual bars of music and you want more, use them again, 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 but each time with different instruments. Of course, they can play in different octaves, this um, kind of natural. Um, I only have one instrument, so again, no piano playing here, um, but a longer example. So, this is from 1617. Um, Johann Hermann Schein, Ban Cetto Musicale, one of the many. Um, so you have our numbers are bars. So we have part A is two bars, like a question, and two bars, an answer. Then part A again, and so on. We will see this live. And you will discover that it's part A, it's two, uh, it's four bars, and part B is one new one, and that's all. That's six bars for a two minute, 30 piece, three minutes piece. And um, the other, it's two from A, so repeat it. Um, and this is... Answer. Hey. 
quite cheap to do this. <laughs> so it's now a, in a different meter, but it's the same piece. And revorons, revorons in the end, it's like the second cheap ending you can do. First one is fade out. This is just like a looping, and then you stop with one chord at the end. So it's I, I I wouldn't have chosen this um, if I didn't like it. So I, I like this piece of music, but once you analyze it a bit, you discover oh, it's, <laughs> it's just six bars. Yeah, why not? Uh, if you are like Johann Hammer Schein, you need to produce this. So this was uh, suite number 16, the fourth piece. So you can imagine there are 16 of these with four or five pieces each, and you need to produce them, and just it's it's work. Next one, ornamentation and embellishment. Problem is sound is too plain, too simple. What do we do? We take one note and replace it with a lot of other notes. Um, this can be done for rhythm only, which is quite common. Um, if you have like, um, like this. So I'm repeating the middle note here. This is already um, a substitution, or um, like this. It's like a, a bass, bass line in octaves, which is kind of the same note. And um, of course, kick drum in um, some um, genres, it's um, the same note, but it's a whole rhythmic piece, even rhythmic voice. Um, you can do this melodically. Um, instead of playing one note, like uh, you can do a trill. Or what is my real example here? Substitute one note with short phrases, but end on the same note no, yeah, note where you started. So this is my my pattern, or my my original line. And now I can play. Let's show this here. This is my original line. And now I will play one, two, three, one in steps. And I end up on the same note. And the same. So from this, I get to this. Or backwards. This was. And because I end on the same note where I started, I don't need to worry about any um, any harmonic clashes or dissonances. So it's it just works. And there, of course, you can imagine many many patterns. And if you're careful, you can like level two. You can you don't need to stop on the same note where you started if if it works. Like one two three, and then next. This works equally well. Um, just the scale, and so on. Um, this was my example. This is, um, it's not the main attraction of this piece, of course, this is a background effect, like to make it, to make it fuller, to make, to reduce the plainness. Um, let's play this for you. <laughs> String section is famous. And so on. Next one, pedal notes. This has um, 
is not directly related to the actual pedal. Um, you can derive it from the pedal, but um, this became more abstract uh, in this meaning. So you ins insert intermediate notes um, of the same pitch in, a, in another melody. Um, the easy part is they can ignore the harmonic context, like the chord, you don't need to play a note which fits the chord. This becomes so independent for the listener that you can just use the note. Um, write a melody first, then insert notes in between. You can choose th to do this on the top range of the music or um, in the bass. Normally, um, if you do it in the top range, you play the notes in between. If you do it in the bass region, you play the notes at the same time. Um, most of the time, if you play with actual co uh, like chord-based music, um, use the root note of the tonic, which is the root note of your scale, or the dominant, which is a fifth um, step above. And this one. So, um, this is... Um, I can do this with... Uh, or like this. Um, yeah, this produces internal movement and also constant reference. It makes it actually easier for the for the listener to follow your piece. Um, ticking clock. We'll hear an example. This is um, a good trick. So, first example. Uh, this. Oh. You can do this in the. <laughs> uh, this is another part of the song, uh, the main main riff. Play this for you. Yes. Yes. Um, more commonly, uh, evenly commonly used, uh, is to use it as a lowest note. If you do the whole music like this, you go into the drone territory. Um, like, uh, like it's written here, folk music or Indian classical music. Um, or you can use it, um, not the whole piece, then it's, um, it becomes quite an interesting technique for like creating a contrasting part. Uh, I don't know if there's a specific English word. I, the German is Orgelpunkt, which means like organ, organ point. So you play one, piece, uh, one note on the organ and then the rest follows. Um, Pedal, pedal note, bass pedal. Yeah, pe pedal is the um, generic term. Yeah. Um, so you repeat how to? Uh, you repeat the same, repeat the same bass note, um, and play whatever you want above it. Um, you don't need to consider the bass note then in your harmonic uh, construction of chords. This does not belong to the chords. Uh, that is the whole point, actually. Um, example. Another example.
even now it's the bass play, still playing the pedal notes. Um, let's see if I skip this. Nah. No. Um, if you do it in the middle, um, this is a special case. Actually, I, I look for like an hour to, to find uh, the specific term, but this is so. Um, yeah, I don't only know the German words. It's uh, Dezimsatz. Um, it's like the octave and a third. It's uh, Dezime in English. Don't know what is in English. Uh, in German, what is in English? Octave and third. I think it's a, it has a Latin name, which. I don't know. Um, so, problem is you have a single voice melody, melody as before, and you need more voices. Um, you don't need to construct an actual, uh, actual thing about it, but just play the following. Um, accompany your melody with a third below, plus an octave, and in between you put a fixed pedal note. This is normally used to produce like a, a very calm, mood, but it can be um, used otherwise as well, as well of course. So, um, like this, um, Robert Schumann, Album für die Jugend, this is the original title, so I don't translate it. Um, Treller Liedchen, which means like um, small, uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, it's, uh, this is my melody, and this is my third and octave below, and this is my pedal note. Different pedal note. It's actually the Moscow trick. It's just the same, different scale, uh, different position. Yeah, works every time. There are countless pieces uh, like this in the 19th century. Next one. Uh, another word I don't know. Um, so it's mixture, it's the German word which literally means mixed mixture. Um, if you can't or if you don't want to write chords with all this internal logic, so after a dominant you have to play the tonic and not the subdominant, otherwise it uh, doesn't follow the logic and these rules. Um, there's another way to, to enhance your sound with multiple notes, which is called a mixture. This um, came, this was in the early times, like 900 to 1300, 1400, and then again from, the, from 1900 in the Impressionist uh, composers like DBC and Ravel. Um, these are as well combined pitches, but not on uh, normal third based uh, chords, but other intervals, um, usually fourth and fifth, and usually some more, not only three or four, like in classical jazz, but uh, as many as you have fingers. So like... And you can just shift them around. Let's, sorry. Like this. And then the same structure, just one. Uh. And this, to me, it sounds very, very good. And um, yeah, I said this already. Um, use a widespread, use all, all available um, notes and best fit for slow progressions. Um, in opposite to chords, you can try an error, like choose and then just change a single note. 
and sometimes they are equally good. So it's it's much easier to find good um, good uh, lines. Don't use this for for single bill uh, um, melodies. Um, this is really an instrumental uh, way of of making music. Yeah. Um, this is a soundtrack example. Next one, another chord uh, way, uh, thick chords. Problem is, if you harmonize a voice, you don't want any um, musical errors. There's like, if you um, learn a bit about uh, setting voices or chords, you learn that you should probably avoid parallel uh, fifth notes, except you want this sound. But like, if you don't want it actively, don't write it because it sounds multiple reasons, predictable or bad or whatever. Uh, solution, don't use the normal triad, so like a thirds, but take the lowest note and put it on top. One moment, sorry. So I take this note and put it on top. And now this I can shift around. So this is normal chord, and if I shift this around, sounds a bit childish, but this is already... And this was used to great extent throughout history. Um, this is for... Uh, to look it up at home, again, what I just explained. Um, if you want a bass note, you can use a pedal, this works very well. Or... Um, a bit trial and error. Example, an early example, earliest example actually. Next one is this. Here also, i play the chords for you first. Uh. So you see extreme ends of the historical timeline. Next one, reduction and recombination. This uh, is one, one of the more, it's a step back in how easy it is. Um, it's easier. 
Uh, problem, you have a short phrase that sounds very good and you put really effort in it and it's very complex already, but it's all you have. Solution, split it into layers and tracks and take some away and then use what is left to build up or recombine because um, yeah, if you take away, you have, like, you have um, empty spaces and then you can um, move the empty space around. If you, if you think from the, I have the completed thing first, and then I take things away, you have empty spaces and you can move this around. Or think bottom up and just put one layer after the, in another. Um, usually this works with uh, four, four bars or eight bars, not a single one. Um, and if you build up, st start with the kick or based, and then um, add or remove layers every four, eight, 16, like n to the power of two bars. Um, side note, usually the such four bar loops can be three times the same and the fourth one, fourth bar, is the contrasting one. Um, this is of course second nature to EDM producers. Um, you don't need to explain this to them, they just do it. Um, and there are uncountable examples of um, songs. Now, same thing, just take the drums away. Not in EDM, but in, in pop and rock music. Uh, first example. to the next verse, they just play an instrumental build up. chorus again, so they skipped writing a whole verse and uh, just used what they already had to build up again. Um, next one, ostinato, it's an international word this time. Um, no problem this time, um, but how about using an ostinato to create a piece for change? Um, this means you have a pattern um, that repeats for a very long time or even the whole piece. Um, I'm not going Playing, I'm not going to play Ravel's Bolero here. Uh, this is the most obvious example. Uh, most of the time this is rhythmical, but um, chord progressions are also in this loop. Um, instead of, uh, let's play this. This is already the repeating pattern. Same again. This time, listen to the bass. Now 
this is shifted up and down, but it's still not not yet, but in the later piece. So this continues for basically the whole piece. Um, no examples here because this is a huge topic. It's its own talk. Um, common chord progressions. Um, if you go to um, any search engine of your choice and type in famous chord progression or common chord progression, you will end up um, with um, well-researched uh, articles or top ten lists uh, on the other end. <laughs> and um, my lesson here is there's no shame in using them. So this is not, uh, oh, I, I'm, I have no creativity, um, use them. They are start, uh, partly centuries old proven ideas that worked really, really well for long times and there's no shame in using them. This is no stealing um, because most likely if you hear a Michael Jackson song and there's uh, chord progression, this is used as, uh, elsewhere as well. So. Uh, before Michael Jackson. So this is really um, um, no shame in using them. And these are some, um, some ideas you can look up. Um, what's the time actually? Oh, nice. I'm faster than I expected. Uh, so I can play one or two. Um, super famous one, already the first. This right chord, but not the right. I have octave parallel. Yeah. Um, um, folia is a baroque theme. Um, um, there are several. Um, for example, green sleeves is based on one. Um, blues scheme, of course. Uh, rhythm changes one of the most misleading. Uh, terms in music. <laughs> uh, it took quite a long time until I realized what this actually means. So rhythm changes does not mean uh, anything rhythm related, but it's the name from, from of, of I've Got Rhythm, a, um, jazz, a musical, musical, um, yeah, musical or jazz standard. And uh, these are the chord progressions. It's very long. It's like 32 steps, but uh, it's so in for jazz musicians. This is one of the most basic things uh, they can imagine. Um, if you are a bit adventurous, look up the uh, octave rule um, in several uh, translations there. This is, um, if you start composing in, in the Bach times, in the Baroque times, this is the first thing you learn. So what do you do if you have this descending um, minor line? What chords do you play? And this is, there's a rule for this. and. Um, Look that up, and this explains a whole lot of Baroque music. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, more or less a joke. Uh, this is the Spanish chord progression. Uh, and nice, nice um, video how to, how to compose without no soul. Um, there's a, uh, in the cent centerpiece is a chord progression as well. So you can look this up. Um, yeah, this is the final, very good, uh, this is the final um, case study, um, Back to the Future soundtrack, the uh, main theme, um, 1985. I wrote it down um, to remember, this was actually not hard to find. I did not look around to find a musical example that, m that fits my narrative here, but uh, I looked for examples at all and just went through my own collection. And I realized, oh, yeah, of course, this is just a summary of my talk. Um, this is no surprise because this is a field of work, soundtrack composition, um, where you have to um, produce and work <laughs> uh, and work within time constraints, and you must you need to deliver on time and um, uh, like the Banchetto Musicale, Johann Hermann Schein, you have to just produce music. So uh, this is an example why this sounds like it is. And it is still a good piece. So this is like a, a timeline and we can listen to this now. And um, 
It starts with actually original material, which um, most of you or some of you may know, and then some ideas you can follow which are used there. And um, it's three minutes long, so we hear it until the end. And um, of course, there are new ideas here and there. It's not not a, a music, uh, computer generated piece, of course. Um, but you can recognize this, and this is actually my my um, lesson for you today. So if you don't, if you write music and then um, you're stuck, remember this talk, maybe look it up, maybe um, use, uh, do some research on your own or just listen to other music and try to find what is common in all pieces of music. Uh, that's what I did after all. And you will find that there are many, many um, ideas when isolated, they sound um, stupid or trivial or um, like too cliche, but actually they are not. They are just standard music practice, compositional practices. Okay, let's dive into this and then there's some time for comments and questions. <laughs> So I think, yeah, we have still time for some some uh, comments or questions if you have any. Yeah, uh, do we have the microphone?
for them. Yes, it's coming. Yeah, one qu one question about the um, the drone nodes mm -hmm. concept. Is it uh, like do you also apply this within like a rhythmic framework, or is it basically just the sustained? Uh, depends on on what you want to do. So um, there are musical styles um, with just really one long note, like anything with um, bagpipes or Indian classical music, um, which is long drone notes, or um, you can do it like like a rhythmical thing. Then it becomes very quickly an, an ostinato, actually. So a bass, bass, pedal note, bass drone notes become ostinatos if you play a rhythmic uh, a pattern. But if you don't play a pattern, then it's just a drone note played at the rhythm. Uh, you played uh, 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 one of the one of the pieces. The oldest one was the Gregorian chant. Was that the original composition, or is that a later arrangement? Um, in these times, the um, the plain chant, Gregorian uh, chant, was as was the basis for for some comp many compositions actually. And what they did is to um, either sing this in the front as as introduction, or actually directly from the beginning, it is one voice in inside the the arrangement. So this was um, the, an older plain chant, and then. Edits on top, like the sixth, six chords shifting. Okay. Yes. <coughs> More uh, of a few remarks than questions. Um, you, in passing, you mentioned the uh, the free rule. Or, uh, I think you did. Um, that's what I always do. Mm -hmm. uh, Repeat the same thing more or less uh, two times, and then change it somehow and re uh, repeat it the third. Ah, that's a different pattern. Hmm? Different pattern, but equally good. So yeah. you have A A B A, and I mm -hmm. said A A A B. Well, I'm, I don't apply yeah. that usually to to whole verses or something, but just to my a motif. Yeah, uh, small, small. Mm -hmm. This can mm -hmm. right, right, very good. This can be mm -hmm. applied to to very small uh, patterns or even whole pieces. Mm -hmm. So, um, like um, most common forms are actually A A B A and not not A A A B. This is not for whole structures. Yeah. Yes. And another uh, uh, thing I often find uh, myself doing is mm -hmm. uh, just uh, either taking the same melody and reharmonizing it completely or part mm -hmm. of it, just changing out a few chords yep. in, in the in the in the third repetition or something like that. Uh, or just taking the same chord progression and doing another me melody over it. Right, yes. Um, mm. An extreme case of this is to use an uh, instrumental solo, like a guitar yeah. solo, um, yeah. which is usually um, on the basis of something that already existed, like like an verse uh, chords. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's. I uh, just want to comment that a technique that I found very useful from time to time mm -hmm. is to play a pattern in, in rounds. So you end up uh, building up um, through the piece, starting from the same point, but uh, say uh, four bars later, mm -hmm. building up and then slowly taking them all back out again. And you can sort oh, yeah. of expand quite well with that. Yeah. Thank you. There's one. I like that, you know, that the questions are equally fast and like, <laughs> like my examples. <laughs> mm, uh, I was uh, um, thinking about the reduction mm -hmm. and um, something I do when I make electronic music is um, when I come up with an expensive multi, m like uh, melody mm -hmm. that like took me a lot of effort and I'm proud of it. And then it's like, okay, but how do I actually introduce that? Because well, I just if I just play it and it's it's it just starts right off. It's I give it away very quickly and mm -hmm. then I have nothing left. Yes. So uh, I think I do. I've learned that other people like do this, and mm -hmm. I started doing it myself. It's kind of a reduction that I, for example, play just one fourth of this melody mm -hmm. and I repeat it, and it's like 
just three notes and I hint what's going to come yeah. next. Yeah. But I come up with the whole melody first and then I just shift it later in my, in my project. I copy it, I, I cut pieces of it to just hint what's going and and this allows me to like use this one melody to create a longer piece that builds a like um, builds up and is not as boring as the same film thing repeated. Yeah, over very over. good. This is um, the very Beethoven uh, technique, actually. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. So, so <laughs> high five, Beethoven. Yeah. <laughs> so sp splitting up, splitting up your uh, longer melody and just introducing pieces here and there and maybe transporting them. Uh, what I find impressive in, in some, some regular rock songs is um, if, if there's the most beautiful piece, which is fairly short, just some lines, some chords, some, some singing, and they, they are so greedy, they play it twice in the whole song and no more. <laughs> so, so really be greedy about the best part, and King Diamond does this a lot mm -hmm. in, in, in metal, and it's, it's just such an amazing effect to just have this most beautiful thing and have it just twice or sometimes even once in the song. Yeah, that's that's the the opposite of what I um, what I try to tell. But this, of course, that's uh, equally valid. So King Diamonds don't have the problem of coming up with new ideas. So, uh, or may maybe they, they do. No, this is that's uh, everyone does it. Every all people have problems coming up with ideas. So um, maybe they did, but they realized, oh, we used this only once or twice. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I actually have one more idea. Please, please. Uh, uh, one very important thing I, I learned listening to music and making my own that is that when I do something s different, just once in the piece, usually somewhere near the end, mm -hmm. when I listen to it or others listen to it, it's for the whole thing. I'm just waiting for this one place where it's different it could be just two different notes that have been the same throughout the same piece the whole piece and then it's different and i remember that and i keep waiting for it yeah. so it, it really helps me uh being hooked in the piece and invested because i'm waiting oh there's gonna be this different part it's just once it never repeats it's unique it's something special yes so this factors in the repeated listening of the of the um audience so you expect them to listen to the piece multiple times, not just once, which is uh, good. <laughs> That's replay value. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, then, um, thank you for uh, listening, and we rearrange and then continue with the next talk or presentation. <laughs>